All right, so we got Layers of Fear 2023 review. Let's grab to the video. Now, this game, um, very highly Not anticipated. Since 2016 Suicide Squad was followed up by The Suicide Squad in 2021. Yeah, has there been not? such a flagrant attempt to make something as needlessly difficult to Google as the new Layers of Fear? This is very anticipated. This 2023 psychological horror game is neither a sequel nor a total remake of the 20 Because it was a layer, um, um, Layers of Fear 2. Instead, it bolts together that was out before. It's 2019 follow-up, previously released downloadable content. I think I've seen Jack said the guy play it. Stories, to form a Frankenstein's monster of manipulated hallway horrors, freshly reimagined in Unreal Engine 5. Yet while there's no question that this Layers of Fear is the best looking and most extensive version of these disturbing stories to date, Bro. it's a package that fails to add up to anything greater than the sum of its parts. And none of those parts are strong enough to create more than a handful of surface level scares. Hey man, this does look good, man. This looks fire, bro. If you guys want me to react to Layers of Fear, I mean, I'm, I'm gonna do it anyway, but like, Man, I can't wait, man. I think gameplay is out right now, so I might have to cover that right now, man. Heavily inspired by Hideo Kojima's masterful and now depressing unobtainable PT, Layers of Fear places us into the tortured minds of a series of artists, a painter, an actor, and a writer, and invites us to piece together their tragic backstories by scouring each setting for handwritten notes, truncated newspaper clippings and other evidence of past trauma they've endured or inflicted. I needed to remove the flesh from the bone. It certainly turns out all the tricks in an effort to unsettle along the way. Each tentative step through its haunted I'm house, running out the house. Sudden thunderclaps if I screams, ever see that. Ominous graffiti scrawled on the walls. You can't find her, she will break you. Shapes in the shadows and pieces of furniture dancing around you like it's disco night at the Evil Dead cabin. <laughs> <laughs> there are some genuinely clever perspective tricks employed on occasion, and it's a true shock the first time you turn your head. And Layers of Fear treats the level's floor plan like a Mad Magazine fold-in by completely rearranging the environment while your back is turned. Nah, bro. However, oh no, this game will make my head hurt. I found that layers of fear repeated these geometry jumbling techniques so often that I quickly learned to anticipate them, rapidly diminishing their shock value. And that's a this problem game, that bro, no. In this, latest release, this game will break my mental, bro. By its protracted length. PT was able to more successfully employ similarly disorientating tactics, partly because it was so short. But stretched out over the 13 hours of Layers of Fear's combined campaigns, the constant walking in loops starts to feel more like arbitrarily jumping through hoops. And the nah, bro, this game will send me through hoops, bro. Such that it's just one telegraph jump scare after another, with rarely enough room for any real dread to seep in. Another major problem with bridging the events of the original Layers of Fear with that of Layers of Fear 2 in order to make a singular story is that the latter is both weaker and longer than the former. See, look at this, bro. The overall impression that this combined layers of fear had Oh no. This is going to break my layers mental, bro. The two story which follows the plight of an actor exploring a haunted cruise liner leans a bit too hard on the films that inspire it. Lifting wholesale scenes and iconography from the likes of Psycho, The Shining, and 7 without forging enough of its own identity to make it feel like anything more than a derivative retread of its predecessor's tour of torture. <laughs> Being forced to play through them back to back like, like look at this. I know what you did last summer and then immediately rolling straight into I still know what you did last summer. You'll go from Jennifer Love Hewitt to Jennifer Barely Tolerate Hewitt by the end of the double feature. Surprise! Right, I did... Oh no, he's on fire. Rubbing here, burning hot, he's on fire. Fear, the enhancement to textures and lighting are certainly remarkable. And that looks beautiful, I, I'll be real. features some truly striking scenes. Whether it's the gloomy shards of moonlight piercing the darkness through windows in the painter's house from the original, or the seamless shifts from sepia to vivid technicolor during the actor's haunted jaunt through layers of Fear 2's ship. Oh no, that was nice. Fine detail can be observed down to the crack hey, on the paint. How you doing? Canvas, and there's generally a high level of realism in the world around you. Ooh. Well, as realistic as a cruise liner that morphs into a hedge maze can be. A little spark is all it takes. 
This improved lighting system doesn't just bring more richness to the environment either. It has a direct impact on how you interact with it via the new flashlight, which presented me with some stimulating things to do outside of the ongoing cycle of opening doors and rummaging through drawers for scraps of exposition. In the painted sorry about that, y'all. Sorry about the sound. Sorry about that. Ghostly echoes found in your surroundings to reveal hidden objects. Oh! While in the actor's adventure, it can be shone onto static. Who is this? Briefly animate them in order to clear paths by pushing crates or throwing themselves over railings. Oh! The latter is a particularly eerie sight to behold, since these dummies move in a stilted stop-motion style that seems unnervingly unnatural. Oh, look at this menace. Thank you. More importantly, the flashlight can also be used to stun the stalker enemies occasionally encountered in each of the two main stories. Baby girl, what's your name? Previously, your only option was to flee these spectral pursuers, inevitably leading to a frustrating instant fail and checkpoint restart if you were too slow to turn on your heels. I missed you, my love. Now you can buy yourself a space give me a hug. Oh! Up beam of light, <laughs> oh! Temporarily halting their advances and affording you time to either identify the area's exit or perhaps quickly search the neighboring rooms for hidden collectibles. It massively reduces trial and error. She's on and fire, rubbing here, burning night. She's on fire. Flashlight makes it surprisingly easier to keep these enemies at bay, making them seem less like inescapable manifestations of psychological grief. She's on fire, rubbing here, burning night. She's on fire. The flashlight can also be used to solve puzzles in certain situations. Oh, Being not the puzzles. Oh no. Messages. But for the most part, the puzzles in Layers of Fear are every bit as rudimentary as they were in the original release. I couldn't even solve There's the God of War puzzles. your surroundings for numbers to input into combination locks, or for the directions to dial open a safe, and rarely anything that demands more than a basic amount of brain power. Writing wrongs, okay. Hello? I received the word that you came to the lighthouse. You find everything to your liking. I didn't go. Tying together the painful plights of the painter and the actor from the previous releases, Layers of Fear introduces the writer's story, oh, no. which is weaved in and out of the two main narratives. The unnamed author is holed up in a remote lighthouse writing a book about the painter, but she has her own personal demons to deal with and has to combat similar hallucinated happenings to those inflicted upon the other two main characters. I have your truth. What the <laughs> this new side story doesn't do anything to elevate the forced fright formula established elsewhere. Oh! But it does serve as solid connective tissue to bridge oh! the two tales together oh, no! and provides a tantalizing glimpse oh, of the fate no! of the series' main antagonist, depending on which ending you arrive at, based on a handful of choices along the way. I choose your help. Then it is done. In fact, there's a heck of a lot of story to sift through in this. Oh, look at that theme. color! Including optional mini campaigns that revolve around the painter's door. I'm about to go Beethoven on these dudes, bro. So it's a shame that a lot of the freshly recorded dialogue for the countless letters and notes you find is either delivered awkwardly, features grammatical errors, doesn't match up with the text on screen. Nah, bro, why is the writer's part scary, bro? There's always a matter of deciphering. Your handwriting. I'm sure you know it's not as beautiful as it used to. Dang! Given how great Candyman's Tony Todd remains as the booming voice of the director in the actor's story, it's disappointing that so many of these new supporting performances aren't delivered with anywhere near the same amount of command or conviction. Tragedy strikes at the heart. Despair consumes the soul. I thought say, here comes the booby, and I'm here to get you. <laughs> oh. Surreal trips through the shattered psyches of some seriously tortured artists. It's made all the more eye-catching thanks to Unreal Engine 5, Whoa. and the addition of the flashlight provides some interesting new ways to both interact with your surroundings and mitigate- Sorry for the noise, y'all. That's like, sorry for the background noise, y'all. ...suffered in the original games. However, its sleight-of-hand scare tactics are still all too clearly telegraphed, and this predictable formula grew stale long before I reached the end of its main story. Predictable? Threats. Ultimately, Layers of Fear comes across as a largely scare-free 13-hour crawl through a string of mildly creepy hallways, as opposed to a, a truly six? terrifying trek into darkness. For more horror game reviews, uh, check out our verdicts on Nah, I disagree. I'll probably get us like a 7 or 8 if I'm being real. Yes. Stick with IGN. Okay. 
IGN in it. Okay. Well, um, shout out to IGN for the video. Um, I would say that honestly, I would give it a seven or eight. If we're talking about graphically. Well, for me, I'm not really a scary games type of person. So, you know, if I play this, um, I don't know, I would get scared easily. Uh, he's talking about some predictable scaring. Uh, not for me. Uh, so we're talking about from gra uh, the graphics, you know, the, the you know, the, um, oh, the graphics, the fear, uh, like the, the puzzles, all that, all that. I'm not really a puzzle guy, but at the same time, if, if I'm doing this for like content or whatever, I feel like this would make good content for me. So I would give this like a seven or eight. So shout out to people, you know, who created uh, Layers of Fear and stuff like that. Uh, shout out to you guys. Other than that, comment down below. What do you guys think of uh, Layers of Fear? If you guys played it already, you guys didn't, uh, and, and you guys watched it or whatever, uh, still give me your rating down below. And um, yeah, uh, yeah, I'll see you guys later for the next one. I'm out. And